Good morning, good morning. Oh, that reminds me. So, since everybody knows Tuesdays are pig days, um, <laughs> everybody's fa my favorite pastor pig. Here's George. Oh, I'm trying to get it right there. That's George. Say hi to George. George is in good shape. <laughs> it is good to see you all on here this morning. You all are getting good at this. Like, I started it up, and then all of a sudden we had 10 people on here. So you all are getting good. It is a joy to have you on here. And we're going to get started this morning. Uh, today is June the 10th, I think. Um, one of my friends on Facebook said the time is simply a concept at this point. So if it's not Sunday, it could be any day. But I think today is June the 10th. We're in Common Prayer. Um, you can follow along at commonprayer.net. And if you're on the, if you're in the book, um, page 314. And I want to, I want to bring to our attention as we as we prepare to pray this morning. I invite you to begin that preparation. Is that. You know, as I read the texts of the scripture, as I read the stories of Jesus, what I see is a situation that is not entirely separate or different or odd from our own. You know, we're talking a great deal about the amount of move my mic here, about the just the the upheaval and the unrest and the the pro just the the turbulence that seems to exist all around us. And as I read the, as I read the pages of scripture, um, as I've learned to read them, I've discovered, yeah, Jesus's world was hardly put together. Um, and Jesus existed in this world of the Roman empire, which had this idea of, if we just squash everybody, that will be peace. I mean, that is what we, in, that's what we call the Pax Romana, that nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to face off against Rome. Nobody wanted to say anything against Rome. And so Rome was free to do whatever Rome wanted. And that's the world that Jesus finds himself in, this world that looks on the surface to be all nice and good, but underneath has a tremendous amount of turbulence. You know, and we read, and each and every one of the stories, you know, if we read the story of Jesus and the people of Samaria, the Samaritans, you know, we discover that there's real turbulence between different groups of people there. Um, you know, as we read stories of sick people, we discover that the same kind of sickness and the same kind of disease and fear existed in Jesus' time and existed in ours. Just because we know a little bit more about these things doesn't make them any less real to the people who are experiencing them. Um, you know, and then we also read about people who have demons, and we can go into the theology, if you want, of demons some other time. Um, but just the idea that we're plagued by so many things that seem to be in our air and in our water, and things that aren't necessarily physically related, but at the same time have some powerful effect on us. And what we see in all of this, like I said, Jesus lives in the same world. And then what we see doing, what we see Jesus doing is the one thing that we often struggle to do. We see multiple times, and Luke is particularly good about this. Luke will say, in the early morning while it was still dark, Jesus went out to pray. Jesus finds the quiet spot. And that's where we struggle, is that and I do this as much as the next person. As soon as I get up, check my phone, what happened yesterday? As soon as I you know, lay down in bed, check my phone, what happened today? Who needs me? What's up? What's going on? But Jesus shows us again that in the world of turbulence, we can't just pray, but we have to begin in prayer. This is what Jesus does. And so, yes, we're feeling a great deal of turbulence. Yesterday was, a, yesterday was a really busy day for me, and so I'm feeling a lot of thoughts swirl as we gather here. And Jesus is like, it's okay. I went up on the hilltop to pray. And I'm grateful for this hilltop that we find, uh, we, where we find one another each and every morning to just do this work because it is important work in this moment. Regardless of what we're thinking about, whether it's pandemic over here or protests over here or whatever's going on in our lives personally, Jesus is like, come on up, come on up in the mountain and hang out with me for a little while. And so it is a joy to do that. And so, friends, I invite you to quiet your hearts as we join with Jesus in the work of prayer.
Let us pray. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And we reconnect in worship as we together pray the colic for the week of June the 7th. In name of Father, in name of Son, in name of Spirit, three in one. Father, cherish me. Son, cherish me. Spirit, cherish me. Three, all kindly. God, make me holy. Christ, make me holy. Spirit, make me holy. Three, all holy. Three, aid my hope. Three, aid my love. Three, aid mine eye and my knee from stumbling, my knee from stumbling. Amen. Our antiphon for today. Root out wickedness from our hearts and scatter our evil thoughts. With this thought in mind, we pray the words of Psalm 52. We'll be reading verses 1 through 5. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt. Oh, you deceitful tongue. Oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling and root you out of the land of the living. our antiphon we say root out wickedness from our hearts and scatter our evil thoughts today we read from the book of deuteronomy chapter 13 we'll be reading verses 1 through 11 If prophets or those who divine by dreams appear among you and promise you omens or portents, and the omens or the portents declared by them take place, and they say, Let us follow other gods whom you have not known, and let us serve them, you must not heed the words of those prophets or those who divine by dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you indeed love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. The Lord your God you shall follow. Him alone you shall fear, his commandments you shall keep, his voice you shall obey, him you shall serve, and to him you shall hold fast. But those prophets or those who divine by dreams shall be put to death for having spoken treason against the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, to turn you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. If anyone secretly entices you, even if it is your brother, your father's son, or your mother's son, or your own son or daughter, or the wife you embrace, or your most intimate friend, saying, Let us go worship other gods, whom neither you nor your ancestors have known, any of the gods of the people that are around you, whether near you or far away from you, from one end of the earth to the other, you must not yield to or heed any such persons. Show them no pity or compassion, and do not shield them. But you shall surely kill them. Your own hand shall be first against them to execute them, and afterwards the hand of all the people. 
Stone them to death for trying to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Then all Israel shall hear and be afraid, and never again do any such wickedness. turn to the New Testament from the book of Acts chapter 6. Um, we'll be reading very quickly verse 15 and then continuing on chat to chapter 7 verse 16. And we continue the story of Stephen. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our ancestor Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. Then he left the country of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After his father died, God had him move from there to this country in which you are now living. He did not give him any of it as a heritage, not even a foot's length but promised to give it to him as his possession and to his descendants after him, even though he had no child. And God spoke in these terms that his descendants would be resident aliens in a country belonging to others, who would enslave them and mistreat them during 400 years. But I will judge the nations that they serve, said God, and after that they shall come out and worship me in this place. Then he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him from all his afflictions and enabled him to win favor and to show wisdom when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who appointed him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout Egypt and Canaan, and great suffering, and our ancestors could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was grain in Egypt, he sent, out ancest sent our ancestors there on their first visit. On the second visit, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent and invited his father Jacob and all his relatives to come to him, seventy-five in all. So Jacob went down to Egypt. He himself died there as well as our ancestors, and their bodies were brought, back, were brought back to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the son of Hamor in Shechem. This is the word of the Lord. Again, our antiphon, root out wicked, wickedness from our hearts and scatter our evil thoughts. Today we read from the words of the desert father, Joseph F. Panaphysis, I think. Um, this is a new one to me. I'm excited to meet a new author. Um, and the desert father, Joseph, wrote, if you want to find rest here below and hereafter, in all circumstances, say, Who am I? And do not judge anyone. Again, if you want to find rest here below and hereafter, in all circumstances, say, Who am I? And do not judge anyone. We turn to our prayers for others, and uh, I do not have any updates for today. Um, I guess I do have one thing, maybe more. it's more me catching up than you all catching up. Uh, I understand Ken Booker, who we've been praying for for some time, has indeed passed away, and so um, 
I am updated on that, and we will certainly remember him in our prayers this day. And um, I also will say, um, and Vicky just posted in the comments for those who can see it, um, that there is an African-American family not three miles from our church who woke up yesterday morning um, with racial slurs and sexually explicit drawings spray painted in front of their house. Um, and so we discover, um, if we didn't know already, that the issues that we are discussing as a country um, have found their way to our doorstep. Um, in so many ways, we already knew it was here. Um, this is part of what we are discussing and trying to come, come to terms with is that um, the ugliness and sinfulness of racism um, is latent in our own soil. It is here. Um, it is unfortunate and traumatizing and heartbreaking when it emerges um, from the soil in such a, such a profound and traumatizing way. And so um, for our dear, for our neighbors, our literal neighbors, not three miles from the church, um, who are enduring um, this kind of hatred, we certainly pray for them this day. And so let us pray. Our God, Lord, for me, maybe for others here this morning, I don't mean to pray on behalf of others, but Lord, it was difficult to read this reading from Deuteronomy and to actually say the words, the word of the Lord. Lord, this reading from Deuteronomy saying to stone or kill those who would have you go after other gods. Lord, no longer rings true for us that we all know beautiful people who have different ways of thinking, different ways of believing, people who do good in the world, people who are your beloved children. And Lord, we acknowledge that your son Jesus came and showed us a different way of thinking about the diversity that we find in our world came and showed us a way of loving our neighbor, even those who, whom we disagree with or those whom may look very different than us or may believe very different than us. And we lean into the way of Jesus. And yet, perhaps, and I confess I couldn't hear this at the, when we first read it, and perhaps we still can take a lesson from this. The severity with which you invite us to be mindful of the gods that are present all around us. The Lord, it's so easy for us to believe that, you know, basically we all believe the same. Basically we all see the same thing. And your word speaks to the fact that there are gods and ways of thinking that are profoundly destructive. We know them as belief systems or as convictions, but you, you call them gods and they're all around us making claims on our lives. And you invite us with severity to look inside, to look inside ourselves and see what is calling the shots for us, because that is our God. And Lord, as we think about this antiphon, root out wickedness from our hearts and scatter our evil thoughts. And so God, we would pray as your people, as a time when our whole nation is doing a great deal of introspection because of crises that rage all around us. Lord, we ask that you would root out the wickedness from our hearts. Open our eyes to see the places, O oh God, where we find ourselves leaning into the ways of other gods instead of the way of Jesus who taught us faith, hope, and love. And Lord, we know we all have them. And Lord, we admit that we're all blinded in some way to our own realities. And so Lord, help us to take the sage advice of the Desert Father who said, if we want to find rest, just say, who am I? And so, Lord, we would ask this day, who are we? Who am I on this day? And what is it that you are doing in me? What is it that you wish to remove from me so that you can build more of your goodness and your love into our heart? Because we're sure that's what you want to do. We're sure that this is about love. It's about a better way of being in the world. And so, God, even in the uncomfortable places of Scripture, Lord, we still yet find your still small voice speaking to us. Give us, give us the courage to look inside this day. 
And Lord, one of the ways that we best look inside, one of the ways that we best give up our gods is to turn our gaze to those who ask for our prayers, those who are our neighbors, those for whom we can show love if in no other way than in at least the way that we can lift them up in prayer. And so God, today, um, Lord, as we look at the wickedness that is around us, Lord, we hear this tragic story of the family just up the road who experienced the horrors and the ugliness and the sinfulness of explicit racism. And Lord, first and foremost, we would pray for them as people, God, that you would protect them, um, that you would help them to find safety, that you would help them to be in a place where they are cared for and loved. We pray, God, that justice would be done upon those who have perpetuated this act, an unprovoked act upon them. Lord, we pray that you would protect them long term, that, that there would be no lasting trauma from this. But Lord, we know that there often is. And so we pray, God, that this might awaken us to be the church in this moment and to speak against sin and to speak towards love. So we pray for them this day. Lord, we also pray for the family of our friend Ken Booker, and we give you thanks for the pr privilege of praying for him in these last couple of weeks. And we pray that he would indeed rest in peace and that his family would also find peace in this time. We pray also, God, for the rest of our list, trusting that you know those needs and will act in accordance with your good and gracious will. And so we pray for the family of Francis Dutterer, for Barbara Muller and Nancy Studi, for Morgan, for Casey Finn, for Jeremy Dutterer, Riley Black, Dave Morschbacher, and the family of Elwood Stanball, the family of Carol Dutterer and Carly and Hudson, for Doris Bortner, Elaine Harmon, Denise Trench, Jared Brown, Perry Lyons, and Chelsea Sire. For Judy Most, Melinda Sims, Derek Householder, and Ann Wilson. Dawn Penny, Drusilla Short, Scott Davis, and Brian Cunningham. Tom Cross, Sherry Armstrong, Dave Cunningham, Billy Heath, Gene Brothers, and Caroline Will. Hear, O oh God, the prayers that we lift up, the prayers that are known to us, and hear, O oh God, even the prayers that are known not even in the quiet of our own hearts. God, on this day we would pray fervently the words that we so often sing. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. In the pursuit of peace, we pray the words that our Savior has taught us to pray, who showed us the way of peace, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, set our sights on your kingdom this day that we may keep from false idols and tempting voices. You alone are God, who keeps us and directs our steps for your glory. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. So friends, I don't mean to, I don't mean to preach again, um, but I just wanted to say thank you to Marge um, that, yes, that reading stressed me out as well. <laughs> um, and I can't, I, 
I may have read it once upon a time a long time ago, but to sort of be hit with that this morning um, is unsettling. And I, you should know that I feel unsettled kind of coming out of this. And as I read this, as I come out of prayer this morning, I feel a little unsettled. Um, but as I read this benediction, the one we've read every single day, um, let us remember that the peace of the Lord Christ is as real as the storm and the wilderness that we're going to encounter. And so we shouldn't be surprised when there are times when we go through storms and we go through wilderness and it's impossible, it's difficult, you know, to, it, to get through the day. But as we're going through this, as we have, as we look at things that are difficult for us to look at, we remember that down the road, as we process this, as Jesus is at work in our lives, there is rejoicing. God is going to bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. And so, friends, I invite you not to look away this day, to not look away from our own hearts, not look away from what is going on around us, but to sit in that discomfort and in that discover that we are on the way to the path to peace. There is a way forward, even in the times that are difficult for us. And we are grateful that God continues to make ways for us. So if that stressed you all out, I apologize. Belinda, I see your comment as well. Um, but it's okay. God is going to speak. That's, that's the good news for this day. And so, friends, now that we're all thoroughly disturbed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release you to go to your day today. And I pray that it is a beautiful and a wonderful day for you today. Look forward to seeing you all in the morning. Thanks so much, y'all. Peace and good, my friends.